All right, let's talk about the future of AI. We're moving way beyond just chatbots that you talk to. Today, we're diving into something that feels like a huge leap forward, an AI that can actually use our digital world, pretty much just like you and I do. I mean, really think about that for a second. What if you had an assistant that didn't just answer your questions, but could actually, you know, book your flight, organize your messy files, or even figure out how to play a new game for you? And it would do all of this by using the exact same apps and websites you use every day. That's the dream, right? That's really the ultimate goal here in AI agent research. But wow, the challenge is just immense. Our digital world is this incredibly complex maze of apps, websites, different operating systems. It's a lot. So for an AI to be genuinely useful, it has to learn to navigate all of that. It has to master this visual language of icons and buttons and menus, what we call the graphical user interface, or GUI. So how is this actually becoming a reality? Well, to get a handle on it, we are going to dive deep into the technical report for a new model called UITARS2. It comes from ByteDance Seed, and believe me, it's making some really significant progress on this exact problem. Okay. So before they could even build this new agent, the researchers had to face down four fundamental challenges. These are the major roadblocks that have frankly held back AI agents for years. Let's walk through them one by one. First up, and this is a big one, data scarcity. I mean, think about it. You can scrape basically the entire internet for text to train a language model, right? But you can't just scrape millions of examples of a person doing complex tasks on their computer. Getting that high quality data, the kind that shows not just the clicks, but the reasoning behind those clicks, is incredibly hard and super expensive to create. Challenge number two is that the learning process itself is just unstable. Look, the best way to teach an agent to do stuff is basically through trial and error, what we call reinforcement learning. But when you have a long, complex task with tons of steps, that method gets notoriously difficult to handle. The AI can get lost, and the whole training process can become unstable or just fail completely. All right, third problem. A truly useful agent can't just be clicking on icons. I mean, think about it. So much of the real powerful work we do on a computer, from coding to managing systems, happens under the hood, in a terminal, or by working directly with files. An agent that can't do that is, well, it's not going to be a real power user, is it? And finally, there's just the sheer engineering problem. This is a massive headache. To train these agents properly, you need literally thousands of virtual machines all running at the same time. These setups are incredibly resource intensive, they're complex, and honestly, they crash a lot. So trying to do this at scale in a stable way, it's a huge challenge. Okay, so how did the UI TARS 2 team tackle that first huge hurdle, the data scarcity problem? Well, this is where things get really clever. They built something they call a self-improving data flywheel. The idea is actually pretty simple, but it's so powerful. Here's how it works. Step one, the AI agent tries to complete a bunch of tasks and creates records of its attempts. They call these trajectories. Step two, those attempts get filtered for quality. Only the good ones make the cut. Step three, those high quality examples are then used to retrain the model, making it smarter. And then you guessed it, step four, the cycle repeats. The now smarter model goes back and generates even better data. And this is why it's such a game changer. Instead of waiting around for expensive human labeled data, the model basically becomes its own data factory. It creates this amazing self-reinforcing loop. You get a better model, which creates better data, which then creates an even better model. It's this continuous upward spiral and it is the key to finally solving that data scarcity problem at a massive scale. You know, the paper itself puts it perfectly. They say, this dynamic system ensures that every stage operates on optimally matched data. This creates that powerful compounding effect where the model just gets better and better and better over time. Okay, so that's the data problem solved. Next up, how did they get the agent to do more than just click around on the screen? Well, they gave it a much, much bigger toolkit. So here's the key idea. UITRS2 has what's called a hybrid action space. That's just a fancy way of saying it has more than one way to get things done. Of course, it can do all this standard GUI stuff, clicking, typing, scrolling, but critically, it also has access to a software development kit, an SDK. This is huge because it lets the agent run terminal commands, manage files directly, and use other tools, you know, just like a human developer would. And the way this works in practice is through a simple reason then act cycle. It's almost like the agent is playing a game. 
First, it thinks. It looks at the screen, figures out its goal, and comes up with a plan. Then, based on that thought process, it acts. And that action could be clicking a button on the screen, or it could be running a command in the background using its SDK. Now, to deal with that unstable learning problem we talked about, the team built a clever framework called multi-turn reinforcement learning. It's designed to make that whole trial and error process way more stable, especially for those really long tasks. Basically, it works by breaking down a huge goal into smaller, bite-sized steps. Then, it rewards the AI for making progress on each little step. This is brilliant because it keeps the agent on track and stops it from getting lost or just giving up when a task gets tough. All right, so we've got the clever data flywheel, the expanded toolkit, and a more stable way to learn. But the question is, does it actually work? This is the moment of truth. Let's look at the results. And honestly, the results are really impressive. They tested this thing on a whole range of super difficult benchmarks. We're talking operating systems, mobile apps, and web browsing. And UITRs too consistently comes out on top. And it's not just beating random models. It's outperforming really powerful proprietary agents from OpenAI and Anthropic. Just look at these numbers for OS World, Android World, and especially that last one, Online Mind to Web. Yeah, let's just park on this number for a second. 88.2% on Online Mind to Web. This isn't some simple, sterile test. This benchmark throws realistic, multi-step tasks at the agent on live websites. Getting a score that high is a massive jump over the competition. And it shows this agent is genuinely good at handling the messy, complex reality of the modern web. And it's not just about, you know, booking flights or filling out forms. They also tested it on games. And games are a fantastic way to measure things like long-term planning and how well an agent can adapt on the fly. You can see it right here. The agent starts this pretty complex puzzle game with a score of zero. And then through actual strategic play, it manages to rack up a really high score. And when you look at the numbers, the difference is just stark. UITARS2 hits a mean normalized score of almost 60. Now that is more than double the score of the leading agents from OpenAI and Anthropic. This isn't just a small improvement, it shows a real, genuine ability to learn and execute complex strategies in a constantly changing environment. So, okay, let's zoom out. What's the big picture here? Why does any of this matter? Well, this research is pointing towards a really fundamental shift in how we're all going to interact with our computers in the future. What UI TARS2 represents is a huge step towards agents that aren't just cool tech demos, but are actually capable, reliable, and versatile partners for our digital lives. By cracking those core problems of data, action, and learning, this work really gives us a blueprint for how to build the next generation of AI agents. And that really leaves us with a fascinating final thought to chew on. As these agents start moving out of the research lab and into our actual day-to-day -day lives, the big question isn't just what can they do anymore. The real question becomes, what can we do together? How is this new kind of collaboration, a true partnership between human and machine intelligence, going to change our ability to solve the world's most complex problems? Something to think about. Thanks for joining me.